Okay, so today's lesson is a lot of practice getting familiar with different modules, so particularly the math, the time, and the random um, modules. So we want to learn how we can use math. Um, remember, the whole point of Python is to make things simpler for you. Um, so we tend to write quite short and simple programs in Python um, at GCSE, but you could expand it so that you do millions of calculations instead of just a couple of calculations. So we want to get Python to be able to do the, the mathematical calculations for us, and we want to be able to display them exactly how we want to. We know how to do that with string formatting, but we also want to, um, to use like the built-in round functions for that. You know that your imports come at the top, and there are a huge number of modules that you can import, although we just limit it to one or two, well, maybe three or four at GCSE. We've got random, we've got math, we've got time, um, and we've got turtle. I think those are the main ones. So we're going to focus on geometry um, with a link to maths today. We're going to work out the area of two-dimensional shapes and the volume of three-dimensional shapes. So don't worry if you can't remember the formulae um, for these. We'll go through that part together. We want to be able to translate the mathematical formulae into the computer science Python code to do the calculations for us. So you should be able to find half term 7 um, CT4, and you're also going to need the PLS. So I'd make sure that you've got both of these open. So what is it? Half term 7, and we're on CT4, I think, today. Pretty sure it's this one just here. Yeah, CT4. Okay. So I would avoid these links here. They are interesting, they are relevant, and they're accurate, but you won't have access to them in the exam. So instead of looking at these links, I would recommend that you look at the PLS because you do have access to that in the exam. So we'll open this up um, and we'll get ready. Let's see if we've got anything about randomness. Let's see, Control F and Rand. You get a printed copy of the PLS, and you get a on um, like a digital version. And I strongly recommend you get used to and familiar with the digital version, so that you can do that Control F and search for keywords. Um, so I'll get you started with the first one, but I'm definitely not going to do them all for you. This is part of the random module. What does randint do? Well, we find it in the PLS, and it returns a random integer between something or other. Um, so it returns a random num a random integer between a minimum and a maximum. A minimum and a maximum. So your job is to put a example in, um, and then you copy and paste the code in. You can do this in Thony, you can do this in Moo, doesn't really matter. Import random. Let's have a look and see what it says. It's got two arguments that you pass. The first is the minimum, the second is the maximum. So if we have a number between 100 and 200, hopefully each time we run it, we get a different random number. So that is the type of thing that we want to see over here. Okay, so experiment with these, read up in the PLS. You can copy and paste and adapt it um, to make it clear. This should be the random or time or um, I think those are the main ones, actually. Just random and time. Oh, and math, sorry. So let's have a look at activity two. You are not expected to remember these formulae for your Python exam, by the way. You may well have to do the calculation, but if you have to do the calculation, then you'll be given the formulae um, in the exam that you have to try and um, tr convert into Python. So let's have a look. You've got given a link here, but there's loads of stuff on it. A reminder what a sphere is. It's like a three-dimensional circle like the globe. Um, so you have a point in the middle where you have the radius. And then the volume formula is four-thirds pi r cubed. So you ask this, the, uh, the user what the radius is, you cube it, you multiply it by pi, multiply by 4, and then divide by 3. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by a right cone. So I'm assuming 
that they mean a cone where the center of the middle is directly underneath the middle of the top bit. So it's not a weird cone that goes down like that. And I don't actually know if the calculation would be any different. Um, I don't think it would. I think like a right cone presumably means um, it's this that we're interested in for the height. Um, so I'm pretty sure the calculation is the same for both types of cone, but uh, you can ask your maths teacher and you can shout at me if I'm wrong. Either way, if you want to work out the volume of a cone, you need to know the height, perpendicular height going all the way to the top. You need to know the radius at the bottom from the middle. Again, we call that R. And it's similar in that it's got a third rather than a four thirds. Let's see if we can change this so you can see what I'm writing. Yeah. There we go. And it's a third pi r squared h. So that's the volume that we need here. So we've got one more here, a square pyramid. So it's got a square at the base. Each of those goes up to a point at the top. And we are interested in the base area. Um, and because it's a square, the width and the length are the same. So for a square py um, pyramid, it's going to be a third of the area, so that's going to be W squared, the width squared, multiplied by the, the perpendicular height. And you've already got the one for a cylinder as well. One for a cylinder, if you can remember the area of a circle, pi r squared, it's just the area of the cross section, pi r squared, multiplied by the height. So that's the maths out of the way. The Python is actually really easy. You have a variable for radius. You use the built-in constant math.pi. You can either do in Python r times r times r, or you can do r star star 3 to raise r to the power 3 with the exponentiation operator. Times it by 4 and divide by 3. Easy. So let's go through this one. This is the hardest one here. The, um, the right cone, the surface area. So if we take a look. So this is what the shape looks like. If we want the surface area, first of all, you've got the base. So I'm going to shade that in this area, which is a circle, isn't it? So it's going to be pi times the radius squared, pi r squared for the radius of a circle. That's the base. Then we need to work out, well, we know what this is. That's the height. We know what that is. That's the radius. If we're to work out the kind of big circle, um, we first need to know this side. So we're going to need Pythagoras for that. We know that, um, hmm, I'm going to call this S for side length. Using Pythagoras, we can work out that s squared equals r squared plus h squared. So then we can take the square root of that to work out what s is. Then we can get the area of all of that side. So that's this splatted side down here. How do we do that? Well, it's going to be pi times r times s. This multiplied by that multiplied by pi. So if you want the total surface area, you're going to need that plus that. So pi r s plus pi r squared. There's some factorizing in here. Remember, Python's going to do the hard work for us. We'll just work through the maths together. What are the common factors? Well, we've got pi as a common factor. We've got r as a common factor. What have we got left over here? We've got s. What have we got left over here? We've got r over here. So the total area, so total surface area of this 
is pi r multiplied by this length here, which is the square root of r squared plus h squared plus r. And I think you'll be pleased to know that you don't need that. I'm not sure. Maybe you do. Just checking through on here. No. Um, I could put an extension if you want to um, implement this in Python, but that's way more complex than you need. We've had a really good question. Um, how do we write out like the mathematical formulae and everything in Word? You don't need to do that in your exam, but it is worth doing. We can go insert an equation, and then in the equation, um, we can say the, the side length of that. Where's it gone? Basically, I want to do this. S equals the square root of R squared plus H squared. So S equals, right, how do we do that? Um, the square root of what we're taking the square root of r squared so r plus h and then this bit is going to be squared so how do we do that um, but um script there we go something raised to the power of r squared plus h script Ugh. Maybe it's better to select it first and then raise it to the power. It's a bit of a pain, but it works. Uh, and if you get time, this is your extension. So we're going to use that maths, but I'm not expecting you to do this. And this is beyond the scope of what you'd be expected to do, even in the hardest question in a paper two. So write a program that calculates the surface area of a cone. Hooray, all of that working out that we've just gone through over here. It should ask the user for the height and radius in centimeters. So, oh gosh, what happened there? The height and the radius. It should then um, calculate the total surface area in centimeters squared rounded to one decimal place. So first of all, it's gonna have to work out S. Then it's gonna have to work out the total surface area using S and display it to one decimal place. Good luck. And then when you're finished, it needs to be submitted to um, half term seven, algorithms and programming seven, this one just here please.